Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another Make a Card by Day video. Today I'm actually going to walk you through the creation of four different cards all using the same product. And this particular technique I'm going to be showing you today isn't entirely new, but I don't know that I've seen it in the card making area or um, I haven't seen it demonstrated or when I did, I didn't take note of it because this is all new to me and it's pretty cool. As you all know, I love watercolor and I've always wanted to use die cuts with watercoloring, but the problem with that is you have to have some sort of barrier when you mask the, the die cut and it has to withstand water. And so that's always been a really difficult area. So I've used some methods in the past that are, you know, that involve irons and heat and things like that. And it, it works but this way is even easier and it's all about contact paper. Shelf liner. This one in particular is actually one that they advertise to put over textbooks, like to cover your textbook to protect it. And I remember being in high school and using paper like this and I've, it had never occurred to me to try it for watercolor. Now, when I was researching some of this, um, watercolor artists have been using contact paper for a long, long, long time to replace frisket sheets, which basically is exactly what this is. It's a very um, strong but still low-tack adhesive paper that's plastic that protects the watercolor paper from any paint that's put on top. When I googled it, I found a couple blog posts with, with watercolor artists talking about how they use this method and it's a whole lot more um, budget friendly in comparison to that frisket paper. I think called it uh, frisket film. I think is what they called it. So anyway, we're going to try this with crafting today. I'm going to do some watercoloring um, over these four different um, die cut designs. I've got the thank you heart from Simon. I also have the stacked diamonds from Simon and the outline floral frame. And then I've got this one, which I've had in my stash for a while, but I haven't used it. And this is the flower covered eyes from Pink and Main. So I'm gonna walk you through die cutting all these. And just so you know, I'm gonna be using some Arches watercolor paper today. I'm going to make two five by seven cards and two A2 cards. All right, so contact paper comes on a roll. So before I do anything, I'm gonna cut this down to some more manageable sizes. Now, this roll, I believe, is five feet long. So it's really long. I got it on Amazon for $9. No joke, it is so inexpensive. And I'm just going to, let's see how I'm gonna do this. I'll take one of the dies and I'm just gonna lay this over the top and then I can use an X-Acto knife to cut this out. You could also just use scissors, but this cuts fairly easy. So I'm not too concerned about cutting these out to be the right size. You could see how this could last you a really long time, right? Like I don't anticipate myself running out of this anytime soon. If you were to do like really big sections on a watercolor painting, maybe, but um, I'm trying it with a few different dyes so we can test it and see just how delicate these masks can be. Okay, for this one, for the thank you heart, I think I'm going to do the outline one that's the words. And then that leaves me with this one, the flower covered eyes. And this one's gonna fit perfectly right there. All right, so now I can just roll this back up and put it in my stash. All right, so I'm going to prep these. Now the front, like this is the part that's gonna be facing up on your card. So when you put it in your die cutting sandwich, this is the direction it's going to be. So I'm using my Gemini Junior. This was my test round earlier. So I'll just peel that up. <laughs> and because it is kind of rolled, you're probably gonna want to tape it to the plate. So I'm just using two little pieces of tape just to hold it down. Then I'm gonna put my die cut right over the top. And I'm also going to use a tiny bit of tape just to hold the die in place because this is pretty slick and it can slide around. So just to hold it right there, put together my die cutting sandwich and then I'll put this through my Gemini Junior. All right, here you can see it cut it out completely. No issues. 
do have a couple little spots that are sticking, but for the most part, that worked really well. I'm going to use my X-Acto knife just to finish that up. Most of these will just pop right out. In fact, I'm not that concerned because I can always peel up just those sections after it's applied to my watercolor paper. Okay, I have discovered that it's a little bit faster if you poke it from the back because that gets both the backing release paper and the actual contact paper. Okay, I have a piece of watercolor paper here and it is cut larger than the actual mask that I've cut. And I did that so that I can um, trim it down later. So I'm gonna peel this backing off and it comes off super, super easy. And then I can just place this right down. Looks like I have one little triangle piece <laughs> that I needed to move, but the rest I can just press down with my fingertips. All right, so for very detailed die cuts like this, you do have to be careful, make sure you grab all of the negative areas. But for the most part, that is stuck down really, really well. I see that. There we go, now you can see it. <laughs> all right, so now I'm gonna go through and die cut the other ones as well and apply them to the watercolor paper. Okay, I have all of my uh, die cut masks. They're all applied to the watercolor paper. I did want to mention that um, this one right here, you can see that design, the outline floral frame from Simon. Um, I can already tell it's warped when I put it on just because the contact paper, while sturdy, like it doesn't tear easy, it also isn't really um, stiff or holding its shape really well like paper would. So I am going to probably have some warping. Um, I'm hoping it'll still be okay so that I can maybe just trim off the outer edge. Um, I just won't have that clean white border, but there's that. And then also because this was so intricate, both of these were so intricate. <laughs> this one was two really thin lines. Because those were so intricate, I decided to just do the plain heart because I sort of anticipate I'll probably use the contact paper masking technique probably with really simple shapes like if I'm masking off a circle to paint around it or paint inside the circle or I might use it for greetings like I want the greeting to be in the middle of the watercolor so in that case it would be intricate like these other ones but not as involved because these were really large images so I'm going to take these to a board and I'll get watercoloring.
completely dry, but um, some of the contact paper was starting to peel up, so I removed it since it was mainly dry. And it looks like some of the watercolor seeped underneath a couple of these little spots. But for the most part, I think it turned out really, really cool. And I like how the little area sort of contained some of the paint, so you've got some darker spots throughout. I think it looks really, really cool. Let's go ahead and finish drying this with a heat tool. So there is the first one. This one definitely isn't dry, but I am gonna peel up the contact paper to see how well everything was contained. Um, I did wanna mention that I, when I did my test run, I was able to use a heat tool over the contact paper. Um, however, when I did try it on the diamond die cut, it started to peel up. So probably just varies on how delicate your die cut is. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a little pokey tool here <laughs> to grab this and peel the mask up. Okay, so the mask was pretty good. Have a little few little areas where the color kind of seeped underneath, but for the most part, it worked pretty well. I think if I would have just run my finger over that tip or over the edge of the entire heart before I started painting, I think I probably could have prevented that. So that might just be like a user error thing, but you know, for the most part, I don't really mind how it looks because it's very organic. Looks like I painted around that, you know, really carefully to get a perfect heart shape and really I just paint right over the top. These last two are definitely not dry, but it's it doesn't have any like pooling water. So I think I could probably peel up the masks without any issue. So I'm going to peel this one up. Looks like some of it might be under my tape here. So I'm actually going to peel up this tape first. All right, now I can peel this up in a way. There are definitely some spots on this one that where the watercolor seeped underneath the edges but the design is still there, so I'm really impressed. For being so delicate, it worked really, really well. All right, and then I'll peel this one up. Have some spots underneath on this one also. I really think um, whether it's going to do that or not for you probably just depends on how well you've stuck the contact paper mask down um, and how much watercolor you're using. I did quite a lot going over this moving my brush back and forth. So it had plenty of opportunity to lift up from the surface of the paper. So that's probably where all these little spots happened. Everything is super dry now. This is actually the next day. Got a different shirt on. Um, so I'm going to cut these out using a couple different die sets from Waffle Flower. I have the A7 layers and also the A2 layers. I use these a lot. I've used them a lot in the last little bit and I find them really, really convenient. So especially for cases like this where, yes, I know you could absolutely um, just put them in, uh, put them in, a, uh, in your trimmer, but I want to die cut these specifically so I'm gonna go ahead and use the dies. The other thing that's nice about die cutting these after you painted them is that it really flattens out the watercolor paper. Okay, so these are much flatter than they were before. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these on card bases now, put a little foam tape behind them and then put them directly onto white card bases. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. It is now 2020 because I have spent the last four and a half months putting together these layers of die cuts. Um, I love how they turned out. However, it did take a really long time. Let me zoom in so you guys can see this. I did four layers of the die cuts. So this one is the Simus Stamp Thinking of You. So four layers of white cardstock all adhered together. It took 10 years, I'm telling you. Um, worth it. I love this one. I think that of all the cards, this is my favorite. This one is Big Thanks, and it actually has a shadow die that goes with it, but I didn't use it. I just did the just the plain thanks, keeping it pretty simple. And then this one is, I think it's just called Oh Hello There. On this one, it's called Oh Hello There, and I put it on a little bit of vellum just because the, the pattern is quite busy, and I just needed a little bit less contrast so that the greeting would stand out. 
So that's the oh hello there from Simon. And then this one is the small hello. And I ended up turning this card so that it was landscape just because there was a little too much white with this pattern going on and it was hard to read the word over the top. So I thought it would be best to have it in a more quiet area. And it just seemed to look better to me having it on a landscape card. So really unusual because it's, I don't think I've ever seen this uh, die design turned on its side like that. So it's kind of interesting, but there we go. Just a cute hello card. So here are all my cards for today. My experiment with using contact paper as a watercolor mask. I think it turned out pretty well. I think I'm going to use this, um, you know, whenever I really want to do some uh, watercoloring over a dye design, you can use the contact paper. And I think it worked pretty well. Let me know in the comments what you guys think if you want to try this out. If you guys enjoyed, um, just like I usually do, I've listed all the supplies I used today down in the video description, including the type of contact paper that I used. I can't vouch for any other type of contact paper if you'll have the same results. This is just the one that I have. So, And I checked and they have tons in stock over at Amazon. So feel free, <laughs> go and get some contact paper. I think it's really great. Um, so all the supplies are listed down below. I'll be back on Wednesday with another card video. Until then, thank you so much for watching and check out the videos at the end of this video. Check out the ones I've suggested and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll catch you guys next time.